Hello, welcome to VMC. I'm Dr. M. FIP or feline infectious peritonitis is a very serious concern, but knowledge is power. So join me today as I discuss some of the more recent advances we've had in treatment options. You'll learn something today. Feline infectious peritonitis, or FIP, is a disease that is caused by a feline coronavirus. Strains of feline coronavirus are found in the cat's GI tract. These are called enteric coronaviruses. Cats infected with enteric coronaviruses generally have very mild or maybe even no symptoms when they are originally infected and they tend to spontaneously recover. The problem is that approximately 10% of cats who are infected will have that virus mutate in their bodies. That is when it develops into FIP. The mutations that the virus undergoes will allow it to spread through the body, often the lungs, the kidneys, the brain, and it will start to cause inflammation there. When the cat's immune system starts to attack the virus, this is when we will begin to see clinical symptoms of FIP. Once the cat has developed clinical FIP, it is a progressive disease and without treatment it is fatal. It's very tricky because this virus can be present in the cat for weeks, months, or even years before it mutates and turns into FIP. We also see two different forms of FIP. We see a wet or effusive FIP where the cat starts to get fluid accumulation usually in the abdomen but sometimes in the chest as well. The cat will also often have very non-specific signs. They're just a little off. They might lose some of their appetite, they might be losing weight, they might be a bit fatigued and that's usually how it starts. With the dry or non-effusive form of FIP they do not get that fluid accumulation and this can make it an even trickier disease to diagnose. FIP is a disease most commonly seen in young cats. Approximately 70% of cases are diagnosed in cats that are a year and a half of age or younger. We also know that the most common form of transmission is from a queen to her kittens. Often the kittens will become infected between five and eight weeks of age. Research also indicates that cats that are housed in high density situations are more susceptible and more likely to develop FIP. Purebred cats may also be more likely to develop FIP along with male cats. The diagnosis of FIP is incredibly challenging. Often we have cats that have a fever that is unresponsive to antibiotics or a fever that just keeps coming back and it's a bit cyclical in nature. We will also check blood work panels for certain inflammatory markers that can be suggestive of FIP. If they have the effusive or wet form, taking a sample of the fluid and looking at that can also be helpful. The fluid will often have specific characteristics that allow us to figure out that this cat likely has FIP. Usually how we're trying to diagnose this in cats is by ruling out all the other possibilities that could cause similar symptoms. We also look at the age of the cat and if we've ruled everything else out and the cat is not responding to treatments then we tend to diagnose FIP. It truly is one of the most difficult diagnoses to make. My own cat Sherman ended up being diagnosed with FIP when he was a, he was a year and a bit and I had him before there were any treatment options and it progressed quite rapidly. So this topic is very near and dear to my heart. The fact that I am now able to talk about some treatments is very exciting news. As I've already alluded to, up until quite recently, FIP was untreatable. However, we now have some potential treatment options. They haven't been around long enough for us to be able to say long term how effective they are, and they are less effective for dry FIP than they are for the wet or effusive form. That said, this is still a major advancement that we even have some options to offer people. So the drug is currently called GS441524. This is the active form of remdesivir. Some people are using this drug in an injectable form, others are trialing it as an oral medication. 
Obviously, we would prefer to be able to give most cats oral medications because injections come at a risk of causing feline sarcoma. It can also be more difficult to inject a cat every day, and these treatments last for months. Remdesivir interferes with the production of the virus, and often if treatment is going to be successful, we will see improvement in the cat within a number of days. It's really quite remarkable. In 2021, these medications were legalized in Great Britain and Australia. Recently, Canada has started allowing this medication to be brought in if the veterinarian will fill out an emergency drug release form for it. Currently, GS441524 is not legally available in the US. I have heard that there are some people who will try to purchase it illegally. This can be challenging as sometimes the medication that arrives is not what it's supposed to be. However, I know that people are desperate and I understand why they end up trying this anyway. Now it should be noted that treatment with these medications can be costly as in thousands and thousands of dollars. If that is an option for you, then it is something to talk about with your veterinarian. Depending on which country you're located in will depend on how accessing this treatment goes. It should also be noted that not every cat who receives the treatment responds to it, but even that number is a remarkable improvement from zero. The other thing that we don't know is how long the medication will be effective for. There are some cats who end up having a recurrence of their FIP after they have some time in kind of a remission, if you will. This treatment is so new that we really don't have long-term follow-up yet, so it's unknown if these cats will then lead a normal life or if their lifespan will end up being shortened. During treatment, a lot of cats also need symptomatic medication and treatment by your veterinarian. So this is a treatment process that you need to work with your veterinarian closely on. Sometimes this means medication to help appetite, reduce nausea, to reduce pain, and so on. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I am all about prevention. I would much rather prevent a disease than have to give people the information on how to treat it. Unfortunately, they're really isn't a way to prevent FIP at this point. The feline enteric coronaviruses are so ubiquitous and we just don't have a good way of preventing the spread of them at this point. Obviously not having a high density of cats is very helpful. You should also make sure to keep you know litter boxes away from food and water sources. It's also important to have regular veterinary care and do the best you can to keep your cat as healthy as possible. All in all, because we don't have a great way at preventing FIP at this point, I'm hoping that more countries will allow these new treatment options to be used legally by veterinarians. That will enable more research studies to be done and that will also help us to treat and save more cats for sure, but maybe that will also lead to eventually us having the ability to prevent the spread of these feline coronaviruses. I put up a new video most Fridays and I read every single comment. To prove it, I highlight a new one every week. If you have had experience treating your cat for FIP, please tell me about it down in the comments. I would love to hear from you. And if you have a video topic that you'd like me to cover in the future, do not hesitate to leave that down below either. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye. Okay, come on. Good girl.